your intervention topic but i thought uh, so many stakeholder right now and i could stop treatment and uh, i think uh, like a neurologist cardiologist neurosurgeon radiologist but i think it's a primary should be like uh, a goal or should be decision should be taken by the uh, neurologist so uh, probably after my talk uh, maybe you maybe more wiser uh, in uh, taking the decision particularly in the late window thrombectomies so again the second thing is like uh, uh, ct perfusion is not available everywhere so can we take the decision on the basis of ct scan uh, for the thrombectomy so you all know the ncct like a wine okay it says is better similarly is a true for the stroke with a ct scan okay in acute period it's really difficult to take a decision on the basis of ct scan but as the time passes definitely there is something there on ct scan uh, beyond 6 hour if nothing there on ct scan and patient symptomatically having high nhs score it suggests this is the candidate for the uh, thrombectomy so you all know uh, the uh, the goal of uh, stroke treatment is open up the artery as soon as possible by chemical thrombolysis or by thrombectomy and uh, the result depend on a few things uh, mainly uh, depend on the collateral so once the artery is blocked leading to two area the center is the core surrounded by the venous blood and over the time that core is converted to the uh, so panama is not going to convert into the umbra okay and this speed depend mainly on the collaterals so there is a kind of the patient they are a fast progressive patient even they come uh, in a one hour two hour you, you do whatever best you can do but still the results are not good so these are the fast progression so they don't have the collaterals and the other side uh, patient they are a slow progression so they have very good collaterals and uh, they allow the umbra, penumbra to go in umbra very slowly. So there is a huge amount of the penumbra even after the 24 hours, even after the 36 hours, and we can do the thrombectomy and we can save the patient. So outcome of stroke treatment depend on three things, and it's inversely related to the final infarct size, regional eloquence. So, elocate area is involved, you are not going to have a better outcome. And then biological age. As the age progress, the outcome is going to be uh, not good. And final infarct volume depends on the uh, uh, occlusion time. The time progresses, outcome will be less. And if the collateral is good, the outcome is going to be better. So, this is the clear cut under. So, I am going to show some example like this patient. If on CT scan or MRI, patient is having the hemiplasia, but this part is not seen as infarcted tissue. I think patient is having the penumbra, better to go and open up the artery. Another patient with having the uh, aphasia, but motor and sensory area is not seen as infarcted tissue. I think this is the patient is candidate for the uh, 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 revascular resistant therapy. Uh, gaze deviation. So prefrontal cortex is not involved. So patient is having that area likely to be damaged, likely to be progress even uh, on the CT scan. And the last the hemi neglect. Okay, if this is not involved. So if this allocated area is not involved when you are uh, 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 deciding your treatment, I think patient is having the penumbra. And everything mainly depend on the collateral, and collateral can buy the time for you for the patient. But the most important thing, the protocol in your hospital. Okay, that is very very important. Once patient reaches to your door, and you are opening the artery, if you are taking the less time, you can give the better outcome. So every 15 minute delay, you are reducing the better outcome around 4%. And you all know, after these five trials, which were published in 2015, we started doing the uh, intervention for the large vessel occlusions. And this is the guideline. 
So what the guidelines say for acute stroke coming within a six hours, there is a rule of six. If patient comes within a six hour, if patient is having an NHS for more than six, if aspect is more than six, and if you can do the groin puncture within six hour, you can improve the functional outcome. And uh, for uh, newcomers, what is the aspect score actually? So you can calculate the aspect that is range from zero to 10. Zero is totally damaged uh, black area of MC. So in, in this, MC divide into the 10 areas, okay? And each area given one number. Four in the basal ganglia level, the caudate, lentiform, internal capsule, and external capsule. And at the level of ganglia, a cortex divided into three area, frontal, parietal, and temporal. Then above the temp, uh, basal ganglia, again divided into three area. So six cortex area, four basal ganglia area. And uh, whatever you see black, you will reduce the one. So 10 is absolutely normal CT scan. Zero is totally black, totally developed infarction. Now, so you can go. And most of the study says, if patient is having NHS for more than 10, most of the patient, they are having the large vessel occlusion. So if now the topic is beyond six hours, late window thrombectomy, and at present we have uh, two trials. Uh, after that, we started uh, late window uh, thrombectomy. These are the two trials, diffuse and do don't try. Uh, actually, in the, both the trials, uh, the, the criteria where uh, which were included actually uh, uh, were very strict to just give the positive results. Okay, so in a dawn, uh, actually uh, enrolled the patient on the basis of core clinical mismatch. Okay, and core you can calculate on MRI only, that is uh, diffusion deficit, and you calculate the core and compare clinically. So it's depend on the age, like more than 18 and the less than 80. So if anybody is having an HS score more than 10, and uh, uh, core size is less than 30 ml, you can take the patient. If NHS score more than uh, 20, then uh, core can be less than 50 ml, okay? But suppose somebody is having 30 ml core and NHS score 15, should we go for or not? We should, just increasing the 5 ml core is not going to change uh, patient outcome. So, but in these trials, they were very strict to just give the positive results. And if you do just by the dawn criteria, we hardly able to open the blood vessels in uh, less than 10 percent, which uh, uh, the patient, uh, uh, those who comes in the late window. Now coming to diffuse, which is uh, perfusion diffusion mismatch, is a, a mismatch. So it is only on perfusion based imaging. So this is like, this is the MR, you calculated the core, so you can take the according to Dawn criteria. For diffusion, you have to calculate on the basis of perfusion imaging. So you calculate, it's automatic. Uh, you, uh, uh, machine is going to calculate you for core size and hypoperfusion area. Like in this case, this is uh, core size and this is total hypoperfusion area. If you substitute this, you will get the penumbra. Okay, so in this case, it was around uh, 65 ml. And in a diffuse, the criteria the more than 15 ml, you can take for the intervention. And if you are limited to these criteria, see the results. Every 50% patient achieved aspect, uh, sorry, MRS uh, 0 to 2. So every second patient is going to improve if you imply these uh, uh, criteria. So every second patient. And what the uh, uh, evidence we have, the level one evidence uh, we have right now for if you're using the diffusion tone criteria. So few words about the what exactly is the uh, perfusion imaging. We calculate actually we assess four things in a, a perfusion images. One is the CBF, then CBV, then T max, and then time to peak. So uh, CBV actually related with the uh, actual infarct volume, the core size. CBF restrictions in my machine, okay? And the TMAX related with the total hypoperfusion tissue. Like in this area, you can visually see this is candidate for the uh, 
uh, uh, revascularization therapy because the core size is very small. Having the big hypoperfusion area, definitely no need to calculate the object volume. But after the, these uh, trial, uh, because all the trials were done on the rapid software, and uh, now the uh, actual definition of the core and hypoperfusion has been defined. Uh, so the what exactly is the definition? So CBF reduction less than 30% compared to the opposite side, like the opposite side is 100 ml, and, and if the affected side is 30 ml or less, is actually the core size. So it's calculated on CBF now. And Tmax, time taken to the blood from heart to the reaching to the particular area, if taking more than six seconds, that is related to the hypoperfusion area. So you can calculate the hypoperfusion area, then you have the core uh, uh, substrate, uh, core from the hypoperfusion, you will get the uh, a total penumbra. So this is about the diffuse and dawn criteria. Now coming to the, this is a fantastic meta-analysis uh, actually published in the Lancet Neurology a few months ago. And they have included all the patient, all the trials, randomized trials, uh, which taken the patient beyond six hours. So uh, these are all dawn, diffuse, positive, Xcap, Rivacast. So all the trial patients. And uh, uh, most of the 80% patient were selected on the basis of CT perfusion or MR basis, 70, 80%. But 20% patient were selected on just basis of CT scan. On just basis of CT scan or CT NGO. And uh, see the results in all the six trials. So the uh, patient who were having the mismatch, miss, uh, selected on the basis of MR or CT perfusion and compare with the uh, uh, acute window period. You can see there is a hardly any difference in the uh, safety profile if you're comparing uh, uh, EVT versus control as well as uh, comparing the acute, uh, what the historical data we have from the Hermes uh, 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 collaboration. Now coming to the actually uh, what is the uh, uh, MRS achieved and in these patient number needed to is 2.5. So every second third patient is going to improve if you are selecting patient on the uh, perfusion versus images. If you are including both CT base and perfusion images even then the number of needed is 3.3. It is not big. It's a very good number, means every third, fourth patient is going to improve even you are selecting both CT basis or uh, CT perfusion basis. Now coming to the, we compare the CT perfusion base uh, com, uh, on basis or just on the CT scan. You can see the number needed to treat, you are selecting five. Again, for IV thrombolysis, if you are doing the IV thrombolysis within the 19 minutes, then you have the number needed to treat is five or six. But here, even as selecting for the late window, number needed to treat is five. This is pretty good. Uh, it, yeah, definitely are going to the CT perfusion uh, is a three. But again, the CT perfusion available everywhere is a big question. Number, uh, how to uh, analyze those things because everybody is not going to have the rapid. So automatically going to calculate the how much is the penumbra, how much is the core size. Uh, so you can select on the basis of CT scan. They have compared with the different aspect score also. So opening the blood vessels, what is suggest opening of the blood vessel is always better than non-opening the blood vessels. You can see even the aspect more less than five, 25% patient improved to MRS2 in comparison to uh, control where the 14%. Again, they have like uh, when patient comes in the late window period, usually either uh, witness or unwitness or maybe a wake up stroke okay but uh, uh, it suggests those comes with the witness stroke okay they have better result compared to the unwitness stroke they have compared uh, with the subgroup analysis uh, also compare control with the thrombectomy with the age with the aspect scoring with the time of presentation uh, with uh, 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 a way of treatment and in a, all the subgroup analysis thrombectomy did better than a non opening the blood vessels than the conservative treatment again the same thing in the, all the six trial again one thing come was common once the patient reaching to the hospital and you are taking that time is more important so i think uh, the hospital 
which are doing uh, like a stroke ready hospital should have clear cut protocol like they are having for the uh, trauma cases like they have the for rami i think that should be protocol should be pro uh, uh, should be there in your hospital so the presence of clinical core mismatch reset the time to reperfusion but the chances of having clinical core mismatch drops down with the time so still time is still brain okay and uh, this is like uh, uh, if somebody is having a uh, uh, perfu uh, uh, perfusion mismatch like a 60 ml of core uh, and 60 ml of uh, uh, penumbra uh, at 6 hour and and even in the 24 hour the same and same nhs score both are going to have the probably same result even you are opening the artery but as the the, the patient who are having the uh, perfusion deficit is going to decline with the time so definitely early intervention is always better so this is my first case which we did on basis of city perfusion i think 2018 the lady came from the dahot uh, she had uh, left hem uh, left side hemiplegia around nhs score 16 and this uh, the core size uh, i usually use, you can say uh, this is a candidate having nhs score 16 which can't be explained is a very small infarction so we took this lady this is the left ica and uh, you can see very good collateral supplying the left uh, mca that is pcom from the vertebral artery to basilar supplying the uh, left side but nothing was on the right side this is the artery which was blocked it's a tapering and usually seen in the dissection but in this case it was not a dissection patient was having the intracranial stenosis and the plaque was ruptured and the, there was thrombus form which blocked the ic completely and we open up the artery and you can see the next day uh, ct scan the infarction size is same it's not grown further and this is the lady uh, uh, perfectly uh, sitting uh, in my opd uh, having an nhs score 16 now zero another patient again uh, in a postpartum period and she had ic dissection you can see there is a flap over here in postpartum period had a very small infarction having aphasia and right side hemiplasia so we started opening the blood vessels then mca and uh, secreted out the thrombus from the mc also so this is the tk3 achievement and uh, she did also good see her uh, language improved on table and subsequently uh, uh, her, her paralysis also and this is the next day ct scan the core of the size of infarction reduced in comparison to the uh, what we see on uh, perfusion so uh, if we go with strictly with a diffuse and don criteria probably we may miss 70 percent of the patient who are likely to improve with the uh, intervention okay so this is the study where they compare the uh, don criteria patient where the uh, intervention was offered and patient who were having the don criteria and intervention were not offered then diffuse criteria then on the basis of ct so you can see that around 70 percent of the patient were not offered the intervention because they were not fulfilling the criteria for diffusion don around 30 per, uh, 37 patient actually underwent intervention and they did equally good uh, like a diffusion and uh, dose uh, down criteria so i think uh, 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 you can select your patient on basis of ct scan also or if you are doing the ct perfusion slight variation i think better to go for the intervention than not doing the uh, cases like in this case uh, uh, she was like uh, not fulfilling the criteria but you can see this is the uh, hypoperfusion area and it's supplying the motor strip so eloquent area infarction is not developed only the prefrontal cortex is having the infarction and uh, this is the plain ct scan she came from the uja having the nhs score of 24 again a tandem lesion ic stenosis mc occlusion so we did the plasty first then open up the blood vessels and uh, this is the infarction which was there already on the CT scan, first CT scan, but nothing there. And this is the lady 
having the paralysis improved completely still patient using the motor aphasia but it's better not on wheelchair uh, now uh, should we like uh, uh, select our patient only on the basis of CT perfusion or MR no this is the largest uh, uh, trials published again in uh, uh, JAMA actually they have included 2304 patient and uh, uh, divide the patient where patient were uh, included on the basis of CT perfusion patient were included on the basis of MRI and patient were uh, treated with the intervention with the just CT scan and they have compared there is a hardly significant difference the whatever the way you are selecting your patient okay so if somebody is having good aspect CT scan and poor NHS score I don't think the patient required to see the how big is the penumbra you can go ahead and open up the artery but most of the is a retrospective study and uh, MR extend is going on on just CT scan probably will get the result in next uh, one year uh, most of the patient were having the good aspect score where the patient was selected on just basis of CT scan so I think in the late window period if patient is having the clear-cut CT clinical mismatch somebody is having just small infarction on the CT scan big uh, NHS score I think no need to go for the CT perfusion you can go uh, directly with the uh, uh, CT uh, scan if patient is having no clinical mismatch in the CT is showing big area then definitely I go with the CT perfusion to select my patient if there is a large score definitely I want to go for the CT perfusion and patient is having the mild neurological deficit then I want to go to see the how big area that patient might deteriorate in next 24 hours then I want to do the CT perfusion so this is the case which I did uh, first case without knowing the literature I think 2019 uh, that guy uh, came to me actually I was treated uh, this patient 2011 for a uh, left MC stroke this time he came in my OPD on stretcher with a left side hemiplasia and he was drowsy I was thinking probably because of double antiplatelet he had a bleed or maybe having the big infarction need a craniotomy so I sent for the CT scan and when he came with the CT scan he surprised me you can see there is a small areas of infarction on the white matter but the rest of the right side CT scan is very good so I took this patient directly to the cath lab so this is the left ICA which is chronically occluded right uh, intracranial ICA completely occluded but there is a ophthalmic flow which is supplying the supraclinoid ICA but it's not maintaining the MC so we sucked it out to the thrombus which was very small then did the angioplasty there open up the place the stent and uh, next day uh, CT scan nothing new developed and this is the patient who came on the stretcher uh, uh, improved completely another patient which I did after three days uh, this patient actually uh, presented to the acute window period uh, physician thrombolyzed this patient but next day he deteriorated again deteriorated on next day so he sent me uh, this patient and you can see uh, you hardly see bilateral ICA okay and this was the infarction on the uh, uh, flare images on, on DWI so again I thought probably something big infarction is already developed again CT surprised me so on the left side nothing the same uh, finding which was there but NHS score was not so good so with, without doing a CT perfusion, even you do the CT perfusion in these patients uh, actually chronically occluded misguide you on CT perfusion so uh, uh, a CT perfusion is good for the acute embolic occlusions but it is not so good study to uh, for the chronically occluded arteries is sometimes it's misguide you so this is the right IC which was con uh, chronically occluded this was the left you can see the collateral this ophthalmic artery supplying the complete MC and this is presently uh, 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 having uh, symptoms you hardly see any branch of the MCA okay so I am knowing where is the occlusion 
I know how much I have to go. So uh, this is the white, what you see is a thrombus actually. So I started uh, removing the thrombus. This big thrombus came out from the ICA and these small clots. And then I passed the wire, did the angioplasty, then a place a stent. You can see the artery was opened up completely. And this is the patient on second day. He started speaking. The most of the patient are uh, outside from the Ahmedabad actually. Now coming to the large core, should we go for the intervention or not? Okay. So uh, like this case, big infarction already on the CT perfusion. Okay. You hardly have any uh, significant penumbra, but uh, in our, uh, the ratio which usually uh, it should be more than 50%, but it was less than 40%. We decided better to go over and open up the artery and the uh, CT will surprise you. Okay, next day CT scan. Whatever the scattered area you see is a normal brain actually. It's not infected tissue. And after 15 days, okay, this kind of the infection we hardly see if the artery is blocked. You will see very well demarcated complete white uh, black areas. But you hardly see big infection in this. So whatever you see black on CT scan is not always an uh, infarct issue is a mixture of uh, uh, infarction, is a uh, high, uh, edema, and uh, uh, when we do the thrombectomy, is a hyperperfusion tissue. So CT, whatever you black see, is not going to dead uh, if you open up the artery. And it's a, a, a multiple series now available. So this is a good study where they compare the patient with a large uh, volume, a large uh, in core volume. Like they divide the patient the 15 ml core and 70 ml core. See, uh, at the time of presentation with the intervention and control, it was around 75 ml in the both. Okay, big amount of the penumbra. Uh, the total hypoperfusion was more than 200 ml. And after the opening the blood vessels, the core, which was calculated on fifth day, was just 19 ml, 96 ml. So in a 15 ml core increase, in a reperfusion uh, group, while the core increase nearly similar to the hypoperfusion area. So initially, when we started doing the thrombin, uh, thrombectomy, we were thinking that if you do the thrombectomy in large area, probably patient will need a craniotomy immediately. But it is not true. Usually, we save the craniotomy, and even in you can see that uh, uh, craniotomy requires only in a two percent rate, uh, uh, seven percent of the patient while. In a non RT, around 25, 21%. And MRS was achieved uh, around uh, uh, 25%, 0 to 2, and a 0 in the another group. Similar finding in a 70 ml uh, group also. So the core size has not increased significantly in comparison to where the artery was not open. So artery open is always better, and most of the time is save the craniotomy. So you can save the money in one side, definitely you have to invest in other side. Uh, so what this... Different, the large mismatch was different as more than 50%? 50 ml. 50 ml mismatch. Yeah, more than 50%. More than 50% is going to be. Yeah, so the core size is about the 50 ml, the penumbra should be around 50 ml. What about the bleeding risk? Bleeding risk, like in this case also, so around, this, uh, uh, it was around 6-7%. In the large, but it is not true. Uh, no, we are not giving the antiplatelet. Okay, thrombectomy Some doesn't. Put in a stent or something you have to give yeah, the then only we give. Okay, so most of the time, what we do, we hardly put the stent. Okay, we do the angioplasty, wait for 20 minutes. If artery is flowing nicely, we are not giving. We usually start on the second. They see this scan, or even after the uh, uh, procedure, we do the CT scan and decide accordingly. If some uh, contrast uh, leak are there, if there is a, some bleed, we are not giving the antiplatelet. Otherwise, we leave. Akash, here they mentioned that they have a lipid over type 2, 0. They have not mentioned a CT case. No, no it's, it's type 2. So type, type 2, two is, a, we are required the, uh, nearly like a hypertensive bleed. Yeah. So it's not, so it's not so common. Yeah, it's not bad. 
it's not common uh, the in, uh, with the intervention if you're not perforating the artery just opening the blood vessel is not going to bleed actually the most important thing you have to uh, actually control the blood pressure so again uh, this is the ct scan uh, patient came from the jodhpur i did the thrombectomy on the best set uh, on the ct scan it was a very good ct scan which was done on the jodhpur having clear cut dense mc sign otherwise good dinitis aspect score they have not done anything at ends so uh, this was the core size i think uh, looks like a clearly infection there but i patient actually on this uh, ct scan had a meal by himself he deteriorated there even during journey he deteriorated further uh, he reached in the morning hours and uh, patient needed intubation so who had a meal with the mca occlusion need a uh, intubation so i was thinking this infection is more uh, bigger than this and again calling for the ct perfusion going to take uh, uh, one more hours so better to go with open up the artery and can you see that then just immediately after you hardly see any infection okay but it it surprised me i was very much happy probably i saved but it is not true you can see the next day ct scan uh, after 3 days very demarcated uh, infarction which again regress further uh, 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 7th and 8th day so this is the usual way uh, uh, what you see usually uh, usually a uh, blocked artery ct scan but now we see more of the open artery uh, 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 ct scan both are not going to be a similar way mild nh score uh, like this and i nh score bit big hypoperfusion area uh, we open up the artery even the aspect was not so big so uh, there is a one publication one case report where the uh, uh, thrombectomy was done uh, with a ti only and uh, literature says uh, if uh, uh, large and uh, uh, vessel block usually they deteriorate uh, uh, with the change in the blood pressure and usually in the acute period in the next second day usually blood pressure goes down and they deteriorate so uh, if patient on ct perfusion having the hypoperfusion area significantly then better more, more than 70 ml better to go for the uh, thrombectomy or you can do the stress test stress is test is when allow your patient to stand up if he is deteriorating likely the patient is going to deteriorate uh, this is the called stress test second uh, if you can do the ct perfusion and if the the mismatch volume is more than 70 ml better to go for the thrombectomy even an nh score is less so i think this is going to be flow chart in a coming future okay just do the ct scan if patient in the iv window period do the iv thrombolysis if clear cut ct clinical mismatch go directly without doing the perfusion uh, scans if there is a uh, no clinical radiological mismatch or I mean ct mismatch then go for the ct perfusion and uh, decide about the ut uh, stroke is a real clinical core mismatch machine actually and decide accordingly and so the conclusion is uh, in mismatch patients uh, it equally results like we are doing for the acute window period safety wise uh, there is no difference uh, when we are doing the acute or late window it's uh, effective in all age group even the big aspect score or low aspect score uh, this is strange like a stronger treatment effect seen actually in the 16 to 24 hours probably actually true slow progress progression they present late okay and uh, that's why probably uh, 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 in the uh, 16 to 24 hours they uh, did better with the thrombectomy compared to the 6 to 12 hours uh, witness score, uh, stroke is always better uh, than the uh, no so now we have the uh, rapid software in our hospital so in, as soon as the imaging is done i can have those imaging on my mobile so we can do the aspect scoring uh, even the mri And, and perfusion scan all the images I, i i i get on my mobile so how much is the core how much is the penumbra alveo is include or not and decide accordingly so very good software uh, thank you so much ha huh?
Is it two minutes? Huh? Two minutes. Yeah. Thank you. If you have any question regarding a quick stroke, uh, you can ask me please. No, repeat is there in a, a, a MRIO CT machine. So they immediately, uh, nothing like. It is done in all now, almost, right? Yeah, uh, all mass patient, all patient. After what time it should not be performed? Say 48 hours. Uh, what time for that time it should not be performed? No, no, you can, I done after three days. After so if you're, if you're uh, imaging a love with a clinical deficit, I think you can go ahead. But most of the patients, they have the stenoocclusive disease. They are not just embolic stroke. So the, uh, the collaterals allowing uh, 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 to maintain the tissue, not dying, allow dying those tissues. So you can go even uh, like I did in 72 hours. In that you require the mismatch, right? Uh, no. Clinical like I did on CT basis only. Clinical mismatch. A clinical CT mismatch. Yet if you have the clear cut good CT scan where the aspect is 8 or 9 or 10, this is a very good CT scan. And having an NHS score of 18, 90, 20, I definitely bet why you are wasting unnecessary your time. Better to take the patient immediately. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.